this is the way if you set up input shaping, use my profile, install the SD card and everything with the harness. Basically the way that I recommend to set it up, you have your camera mounted, leave these screws out so you always have easy access to this. I'm doing this with one hand while I'm holding the camera, but if you tuck that in the right position, you can just lift this up. And pull the connector right out. And then mount it right on the top and take these out. Then you're going to mount it right there. Oh, you could do double, I made an extra hole there, or you could do an adapter like I seen Marius did. But honestly, even just the one will hold it good. But that's basically it. <laughs> then you're going to come over to the computer and you're going to type in measure axis noise, hit enter, and let's see what the values. You want values close to 100. It would be better if they were all below 100. Let me pull them up again. So mine are coming up a little high. So, come back. Make sure all these connections are nice and tight. And we try it again. So. Now, if it's coming up like that, let me unscrew this. Now, let's see what we get. Okay, now they're perfect. So, the reason that happens is this is printed at a carbon fiber polycarbonate. So, it grounds out through this screw. That's the biggest mistake that a lot of people are going to make. Either you need to put a washer in between that bolt, or you can place it. What I'm going to do is the lazy way and I'm going to sandwich it underneath that white piece. A simple quick way is you can wrap plastic or a plastic bag, put it inside it. That'll insulate it enough to get a decent, which as long as you're below 100, that's a good value. Now with nothing on it, literally the values are amazing, which if you print them out, you should get values somewhere around there, but you also probably need to use plastic screws. But anything below 100 is more than adequate enough for our purposes. And then at that point, now this is only going to work if you're using my SD card or an image that I install with you. Otherwise, you're going to need to follow the guides on, that you can find online. I mean, there's not really any. like simple guides for anyone that doesn't have experience with the Raspberry Pi or Linux but if you do you'll be able to install them the numpy dependencies the libraries with all the scripts and then you should be able to do it that'll take about 20 minutes I mean a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigs or more will do it in like 5 minutes but a 3 or even a zero can honestly run it. It'll just take a long time to install the dependencies. The other thing is you need to increase your max Excel D cell to 10,000 in your config file. Otherwise, right now it thinks it's running and it's barely moving. And you're going to get really good results because it's not actually working. So you're going to want to go up to the top, if you're, once again, if you're using my configure, you're already going to have 
the uh, Raspberry Pi set up as a host, you'll know because you'll be able to see the temperature if you have it set up. And then max XL D cell, you're gonna want it to be at least 7,000. I mean 10,000, and then max XL at least 7,000. Once again, most important thing, max XL to D cell, you're gonna add that if it's not there. If it should already be there, just uncomment it. Make sure that's 7,000, 10,000. Square corner velocity on the 300, I've run up to 10, but it usually doesn't make the prints any faster and it just doesn't work with input shaping very well. So I wouldn't go higher than six or seven on the 400 and I wouldn't go higher than eight on the 300. This newer version now is much more advanced. It'll give you the smoothing ratio, which I would think you want to stay below two as a value. I have two pro points that I'm setting it to go at. <laughs> 